I'm going to be showing you the easiest way to solve the mirror cube for the first time. Before we jump right into it though, we need to realize how similar the mirror cube is to the 3x3. Here I have the Raphael Magic Puzzle Cube, and as you can see, both the mirror cube and the 3x3 essentially have the same pieces, like the center pieces, the four edge pieces on each side of the cube. They're just different shapes and have no color. Throughout these next few steps, I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the mirror cube and 3x3 just so that you can get a visual from what you're already used to. And if you already know how to solve the 3x3, then you should be able to pick up this pretty quickly. But if not, I'll be going through the steps pretty thoroughly so you shouldn't have any issues. After scrambling the mirror cube, what we have to find now is the center piece that is the longest or the center piece that sticks out the most. Um, one way to best kind of find the center piece is to have the cube just you know looking right at you and if you see any center pieces sticking out pretty far. From this angle it doesn't look like anything is sticking out um, really at all so we'll just kind of rotate the cube a little bit and from this perspective we have this center piece. It looks like it's pretty long. It sticks out pretty far and probably the most from all the other center pieces. Um, I would say this one and this one. Uh, but I think that this one is going to be the, the longest. So just to verify that though, uh, we could just take any of these, like a side piece right here, and just rotate it up. And it actually is flush with that. So that means that this is going to be the longest uh, center piece. And just to verify it one more time is if we rotate it back, uh, this center piece, it's not flush with that edge piece. So let's go ahead and rotate this right side back up because we know that this centerpiece is the longest one. I went ahead and created on the 3x3 what we're going to be doing next on the mirror cube. We're essentially going to be rotating the white edge pieces to solve for the white cross on the top layer. There are more efficient ways to solve this step, but again, I find this the easiest way to learn and teach if you've never solved the mirror cube before. So with the longest centerpiece facing up here on the mirror cube, which we'll call our white side, uh, just like our white side right here, and here's a white edge piece, which will be, we'll say this one right here. All right, so now what we need to do is find an edge piece that will fit up here that will become flush, just like this other one. If it's not flush, that means it's not gonna work. All right, so to get a good grasp on maybe which edge piece will work or not, it's just look for the biggest ones. So here's a pretty big one right here. Corner piece, corner piece, edge piece. So rotate this up. And even though it's a big edge piece, it's still not gonna fit. So let's just rotate this one a little differently. So it's more vertical instead of laying down. To do that, you can just rotate it back towards us. Rotate this middle layer. It doesn't matter if the bottom layer goes with it for now, but we're just focusing on this piece right here and then rotate it up to the top layer. And now it's flush. So essentially we have this, this, and this, and now we have these three pieces. Now let's look for another edge piece that looks pretty big. We have corner, corner, edge. This one does look pretty big. So let's just go ahead and make sure it is um, underneath of the spot where it's supposed to go. So rotate that over and then rotate this right side 180 degrees and there we go. It is flush so that's great. Now let's go ahead and find the last edge piece. So here's one, two and that edge piece is not big so that's not going to fit up there. And here's an edge piece that looks really big so let's go ahead and rotate this up. Uh, but it's facing the wrong direction because it's not flush. So let's go ahead and just rotate this right side towards us. Rotate this middle layer so that we could go ahead and just rotate this right side up. And now it's flush. So now we pretty much have the, um, the white cross. Once you've created the cross on the top with the edge pieces flush with its center piece, we now have to make sure that the edge pieces are in their correct positioning. And what that would look like on the 3x3 three three is you have the white cross, and then you have these two colors matching. We have the green, green, red, red, and blue, blue. 
So now, as you can see, the center pieces aren't flush. And that's what we're gonna be doing now. It's because these pieces, these white pieces, aren't in their correct positioning. To make sure that they're in their right positioning, what I normally do is have the larger part, or this larger edge piece, the bottom of the cross, here on the bottom. And then the top, uh, the smaller piece of the cross will be on the top. And then here on the arms, we have the left arm and the right arm. We need to have the larger of the arms on the left and then the smaller one on the right. So let's just go ahead and do that. So rotate this right side 180 degrees so that it goes on the bottom layer. Just rotate it 180 degrees so that it's right here. It needs to go right here. So just rotate that up. And now we have the smaller arm over here on the bottom. Rotate that 180 degrees so it can go back up here. And now what we could do, since we have these white pieces in the correct positioning, it's just like having this. We have the white here, and just move that middle layer over. So it's pretty much like that. So when we move this middle layer over one, then now they're all the same. So that's good. So here on the mirror cube, let's just go ahead and move this or rotate this middle layer over to where they're all flush and once one of them is flush, they'll all be flush, as long as you have the correct pieces in their right positioning. And again, to make sure that they're in their right positioning is to have the larger part of the cross, which would be this bigger edge piece on the bottom, the smaller edge piece on the top. We had the bigger edge piece um, as the left arm, and then the smaller um, arm as the, as the right edge. Here in step two, we're gonna be solving for F2L, which is the first two layers. So let's go ahead and flip the mirror cube over so that the soft cross is on the bottom. Now what we need to do is find an edge piece that will fit in its corner. What I mean by that is, uh, like for example, we have a corner piece, corner piece, and then an edge piece. This edge piece needs to fit in either one of these four corners. We know that this piece doesn't fit in these two because these these two pieces aren't flush. So let's go ahead and rotate this top layer over. It's still not flush. Still not flush as you can see there. All right, now this edge piece is flush with this center piece. So we know that this edge piece needs to either go here or here. If we were to rotate this piece right here, we'll see that this side is flush, but still not this side. So we know that that doesn't go there. If we were to rotate it this way, on the left side, then they're both flush, and that's where we know this edge piece needs to go. So let's go ahead and leave that there, and go ahead and rotate this side to the bottom, because we wanna keep our edge piece safe, while we rotate this right side back up, because we uh, need to fix our cross that we messed up on the bottom. And then rotate our edge piece back up into position. So now since we have the edge piece where it needs to go, because this is flush and then this is flush with that center piece, we have to go ahead and find our corner piece. So to do that, let's go ahead and just look for, see, probably gonna be this smaller one or this smaller one. But I think because it's, if you could tell, this piece looks a little bit smaller than this little area. So let's go ahead and uh, move this piece over on top to where it should go. And to test it, we could just go ahead and rotate this down and it does look pretty flush, so that's good. We know that it goes there. And before we go any further, I wanna go ahead and show you the next couple steps in this process with a three by three as an illustration. If you watched my intro to F2L video, then this will be more familiar to you, but if you haven't, then I'll make sure you also understand. Here on the three by three, there are only five ways the white piece can be facing. It could be either facing on the top, which is where it's now, it could be facing right here, which is will be towards us, or the white could be on the right, which is facing that way. We could either have the white on the bottom facing us or the white facing to the right on the bottom. Since all of the corner pieces are different shapes and sizes on the mirror cube, there are going to be 20 different variations when trying to put this corner piece in its correct position. One thing you need to remember is that the smaller side of the corner piece represents a white on the three x three. 
for instance, we have this smaller side, smaller than this side, and this side. So this is the side that represents the white on the 3 by 3 To help make this part a little easier, I took a photo of each variation with their algorithm, and I'll post it on the screen right now. As you just saw from the photos that were just on the screen, we have the white facing us on the top, which is going to be up counterclockwise or up prime, right, up prime, right prime, up two times, right, up prime, right prime. And obviously, when it's all flush, that means uh, it's in its correct position. So let's go ahead and find another edge piece to go in its right spot. So let's rotate it to where it's flush with the center piece. And it looks like if we just rotate this down, yeah, so that's where it should go. So to get that in its correct position, let's go ahead and just rotate this down. And then put it into its bottom layer to keep it safe. Then rotate this right side back up again so we could fix our cross on the bottom, and then rotate this left side back up again. All right, so now we have that corner side done. So next uh, edge piece, we have this one right here. It's not flush right here. So let's go ahead and just rotate it to where it's gonna be flush with the center piece. All right, this side's already where it should be, so we know that this edge piece needs to go here, and just to verify, we can just do that, and now it's all flush. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this towards us, put it into position, rotate our edge piece into the bottom layer to keep it safe for when we go ahead and fix our cross on the bottom. Rotate this left side back up again, and now we have the edge piece where it should go. Now let's go ahead and find this corner piece. It looks like it is that one right there. So as we just learned, the smaller side of this piece is going to be the white. So white is on the bottom facing to the right, and that's going to be right up two times, right up, right counterclockwise, or right prime up, right, up two times, and then right two times. All right, so now we just have one more side piece to uh, fix here. So let's rotate it to where it's gonna be flush with a center piece. And the last section is right here, so we know that this piece needs to go here. Rotate it into position put this edge piece on the bottom so that we could keep it safe for when we fix our cross and then rotate it back up. All right, so now we have, it's actually already in position as well. This last corner piece needs to go right here. The smaller side of this corner piece is gonna be white, so white is on top. So white is facing upwards. And the move for this one is right up, right counterclockwise, or right prime, up prime, right, up, right prime, up prime, right, up, and then right prime. When you're solving the first two layers, or F2L, and you get an edge piece that should be in the right position, it just has to be flipped around, it'll look just like this. So we know that this red needs to go here, and this green needs to go here. So it's in the right spot, it just has to be uh, flipped around. So to do that, we would just go uh, rotate this right side up, get this edge piece out of the way, and rotate it back down. And then we could go ahead and put this in the right spot, so it would be just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that on the mirror cube. So here on the mirror cube, we have the edge piece in the right spot. 
it just has to be flipped around. So rotate it uh, up into the top layer, rotate this edge piece out of the way so that when we fix our cross, it won't screw anything up with this edge piece. So rotate the right side back down to fix our cross here. Now we have the edge piece flush with this center piece and if just for testing if we were to rotate this to the right we'll see that this is flush as well so we know that this piece needs to go here so rotate it uh, to the right into position rotate this uh, edge piece to the bottom layer so that when we fix our cross it won't mess that piece up and then rotate this right side back up so our edge piece will be in the right position when you have the corner piece that's on the bottom with the white facing us, and again, we know that the white is this piece right here because it's smaller than this side. So when the white is facing us on the bottom, we wanna do this move, right two times, up two times, right counterclockwise or right prime, up prime, right, up prime, right prime, up two times, right prime. When we have the corner piece on the top and the white is facing to the right, and we know that this is the white side because it's smaller than these two sides, we're gonna go ahead and do this move. Take these bottom two layers and go clockwise, right counterclockwise or right prime, up, right, up two times, right prime, up, and right. After we get this edge piece in the right position to make sure it's flush with this center piece and the center piece, now we have to find the corner piece that goes in this corner right here, which is going to be this corner piece right here because it's the only other small one that would fit in this spot. So whenever we have the uh, corner piece in the bottom position, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get that over here. And so it'll look just like this. We have the edge piece in the right position. It's just that this corner piece uh, needs to go up here so that we can put it down there. So to do that, just rotate it up, out of the way, back down, and then that's all you have to do. If it was in the back, then you would just rotate it up, out of the way, and then back down again but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this on the mirror cube which will be go ahead and rotate this corner piece up because we want to get into the top layer move it out of the way so that when we fix our cross on this left hand side then it won't do anything with that piece right there so go ahead and rotate it back down we fix the cross and we went ahead and got our corner piece in the right position now we have this corner piece uh, above where it's supposed to go and the white is facing us because this is the smaller side from these other two sides. So white is on the top facing us and just like from what the pictures you already saw, the, uh, the move for this is up counterclockwise or up prime, right, up prime, right prime, up two times, right, up prime and then right prime. After solving the first two layers of the mirror cube, you're going to get a pattern on top, just like the 3x3. Three three. After solving the first two layers, you're going to get one of three of the most common patterns. You'll have the yellow hook, you'll have the yellow bar, and the yellow centerpiece. Uh, there's different moves for those, but I'll have those on the screen here in just a moment. But in this situation, we do have the yellow cross, which we also have a cross formation on the mirror cube. One easy way to tell what pieces are yellow on the mirror cube are the pieces that are flat, as you can see. So these four pieces in the corner, they're not flat, so they're not a yellow piece. So that's a really easy way to tell what pieces are yellow. When we have this formation of the yellow, we need to have one of these yellow pieces that are facing us in this corner so that the yellow is facing left. And a good way to tell what piece that is on the mirror cube 
is on these pieces, it's the side that's flat, like the biggest flat side, so that this is yellow, this is yellow, uh, this side's not yellow, this side's not yellow, because these aren't the biggest side of the piece. All right, so let's go ahead and move this top layer so that this yellow piece is facing left, just like this, uh, the three by three. And again, we know that this is the yellow side because that's the biggest part of the side of this piece and it's facing the left direction. So we have a yellow facing us here, just like this yellow piece right here. Now we'll go ahead and do our move, which is right, up, right counterclockwise or right prime, up, right, up two times, right prime. After completing that move, um, it looks kind of confusing about what's going on right now, but if I were to do that same move right here, you're going to be ending up with a fish. And as you can tell, the, the tail of the fish is right here with the nose right here, just like this. All of these pieces are flat except for these three in the corner, just like this. So when we have the fish, let's go ahead and move the um, the top layer so that the fish is the tails in the top right hand side and the head is in the bottom. So it looks just like this. So the on the mirror cube, the three that are raised, put the you know put them in the top right corner. So now we have the yellow facing us and the yellow facing us. When the yellow is facing that direction to the right, we could do the same move twice. Uh, and then later on, I will show you how to do what's called an anti soon, where you could just kind of skip that step so you don't have to do it twice. But uh, for right now, let's go ahead and do uh, the soon move one more time. That's a technical name for what, what the move we're doing right now. So the soon, the right, up, right counterclockwise, right prime, up, right, up two times, and then right prime. As promised, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the anti soon move right now. First, we need to make sure that the tail of the fish is in the top right, and the head is in the bottom left, and that the yellow piece is facing to the right. And again, we know that this piece is yellow because it's the largest, flattest side of this piece right here. And just like what we have in this three by three, we have the yellow facing right, the tail in the top right, and then the head in the bottom left. So now let's go ahead and do the anti soon move. Take the cube and rotate it on its y axis counterclockwise. Go left counterclockwise or left prime, up prime, left, up prime, left prime, up two times, and then left. One benefit of doing the anti soon move is just so that we don't have to do this move twice, which is just called the uh, just the standard soon. After solving the first two layers of the mirror cube, you may end up with the bar, which will be three flat pieces along the center of the cube. It may look like this going from up to down, down to up, or it could be from left to right. And kind of like here on the three by three, we have the three yellow across the center. So whenever you have the bar, just make sure that you have the bar going from left to right instead of like this. And then we'll go ahead and do our move, which is front, right, up, right prime, up prime, and then front prime. You may also end up with the hook, which will be three flat pieces in a hook formation. Kind of like here on this three by three, we have the hook right here. See, sometimes you might have the hook uh, oriented just a little bit differently, but when you solve it, make sure that the hook is facing in the top left directions. So here on this mirror cube, the hook right now is in the bottom right. Go ahead and just rotate this top layer so that the hook is in the top left. 
I know that there's four yellow, you know, four yellow pieces right here, but don't worry about this one. It's these three that we're worried about. So these three yellow pieces is what makes the hook. Now let's go ahead and do the hook move, which is front, up, right, up prime, right prime, and then front prime. You also might end up with a variation like this, where all of the pieces on top are flat except for these two opposite corners. And whenever you have this, go ahead and just make sure that the two opposite corners are in the top left position and then the other ones in the bottom right position. Then go ahead and do the standard soon move, which is right, up, right prime, up, right, up two times, then right prime. And then you're gonna go ahead and get another variation where you have two corner pieces that are up. Uh, now when you have this, make sure that the two pieces are in the bottom left directions and then the bottom right directions facing you. And then go ahead and do the same move, which is right, up, right prime, up, right, up two times, and then right prime. Hopefully this won't be too hard to see, but here in the center we have a flat piece, which we're gonna call a yellow piece because it represents this yellow piece here in the three by three. And whenever we have a lonely yellow center piece here in the center, we're gonna go ahead and either do the bar move or the hook move. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So let's just go ahead and do the bar move for this one, which is front, right, up, right prime, up prime, then front prime. After we do that, we're gonna get the hook. So let's go ahead and rotate this hook to where it's in the top left direction, just like this, and go ahead and do the hook move, which is front, up, right, up prime, right prime, and then front prime. If you started with the hook move instead of the bar move, I'll go ahead and show you that way now. We have front, up, right, up prime, right prime, and then front prime. And now we have the bar. So let's go ahead and move the bar to where it's going from left to right and then go ahead and do the bar move, which is front, right, up, right prime, up prime, and then front prime. In step three, we were able to make the top layer all flat now here in step four, we have to get the corners the same. What I mean by that is, for example, in this three by three, we don't have any of the same color corner pieces. So, you know, here's orange and red, uh, green and blue. We don't have like red or red or blue and blue, uh, meaning there's no same color in the corners. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now. With the mirror cube, you have the corners. As you can see, if they were matching, they would both be flush with the corner or they'd both be the same length or the distance. So if we keep on rotating this out around the cube, as you can see, this one's flush, this one's not. So that's not the same corner. Here, that one overextends. This one doesn't go enough. So these aren't the same corners. And here we have this one that's flush and this piece isn't flush. So these corners aren't the same. So whenever we don't have the same uh, corners, Go ahead and just do this move, which is right prime, front, right prime, back two times, right, front prime, right prime, back two times, and then right two times. 
After we do that, you'll see that one of these corner pieces matches up. So here it's flush on this side and it's also flush on that corner. So whenever you have the corner pieces that are matching, go ahead and put those in the back and then go ahead and do the same move again, which is right prime, front, right prime, back two times, right, front prime, right prime, back two times, then right two times. In this situation, we were actually able to complete the cube. Um, you just have to rotate the top to where it looks like that, then you're done. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple other examples though, in case you didn't complete it after that step. You may have ended up in a situation like this where all the corner pieces are flush with the other edge pieces, but these two pieces need to be switched around. Like here on the three by three, everything is done. All these corners are perfect. It's just that these two pieces need to be switched and these two pieces need to be switched. Kind of like just parallel lines. So here when we have this, make sure that you have the piece that's kind of sticking out that needs to go from this direction to over here. Have that facing us, this piece facing us, and then go ahead and do this move, which is right prime, up prime, right, up prime, right, up, right, up prime, right prime, up, right, up, right two times, up prime, right prime, up two times. You also might have ended up where the center pieces just had to be switched, so they're just completely opposite from each other. So after making sure that all the corners match up and are flush with the other edge pieces here, just like what we have on all the sides, like this piece needs to go here, this piece needs to go here, so just completely opposite from each other. Just like on this three by three, where the red has to go over here and then the orange over here, the green and then the blue, just completely switched around. So whenever you have this, go ahead and do this move, which is right two times, up two times, right, up two times, right two times, up two times, right two times, up two times, right, up two times, and then right two times. I'm gonna be showing you two more moves, which will be the final two moves into solving the mirror cube, or a three by three. And here what we have on the three by three, as you can see visually, we have everything completed on the back. And then everything is flush on the mirror cube so you know that that's how it should go. Now the only thing we have left is to rotate the top layer in a clockwise rotation like this because the green has to go here and the red has to go here. So it's in a clockwise rotation. So on the mirror cube, this piece has to go here, this piece has to go here, just like this. So with the completed side facing back, go ahead and do this move, which is right two times, up, right, up, right prime, up prime, right prime, up prime, right prime, up, and then a right prime. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that same move, but in a counterclockwise rotation, because this piece needs to go here, and this piece needs to go here, as you can see, just like that. So again, with the completed side in the back, go ahead and do this last move, which is right, up counterclockwise, or up prime, right, up, right, up, right, up prime, 
write prime, up prime, and then write two times. And there you have it. Congratulations on solving the mirror cube. Check out my other cube videos and be sure to like and subscribe. Also follow me on Twitter for video updates and giveaways.